Yeah. Uh, today is a subject we are talking about your mind, your soul and the relationship. When I'll finish this lecture, you will be sad and not happy. <clears throat> but I'll try to make it as light as possible. To ask soul, to ask soul to come, to conceive a soul to be, and have a soul to, up to time of pregnancy and delivery, and then develop a soul to infinity, because soul came from infinity, it is the purpose of two souls which is called in the human body as a father and a mother. <clears throat> it is the pre-preparation of purity which no prostitute is competent to deliver and no pimp can think to achieve. Soul is part of God, it is pure. Like a seed is always pure, but if a seed is put in a land which cannot bear it right, no fruit can be all right. That is how the cycle of the birth and death continues to follow souls. It was very astonishing to me, once a girl, she has left Triacho, now she was in Triacho, and she gave birth to a child. The parents did not sleep any time. The child won't let them sleep. And one day, just to experience how horrible her cries were, the baby child, I went, I was shocked. Even I couldn't sit there. Well, we did make the management, and the only management we could do is to play the tape when the child was in sleep, to play, play the kirtan. Because the food of the soul is not pizza and spaghetti and all that, soul has a food too, and that is the nod. <clears throat> and when the Gurbani with the music is sung and it relates to subconscious, the nod awakens in the human. And that way, it did affect the child, it became all right. Unfortunately, the problem here is the mothers here, there's no such thing in the United States, I'm finding it very difficult, there's no such thing as a mother. There's a emotion, I call them emotional creeps. I have also have to find some word in psychology so that what I'm saying today, tomorrow should be understood. It is these emotional creeps who has the legal right to be identified as mothers. They are scared, they are insane. And what happened is their insanity and their fear and their everything is totally dramatized and relived by the child because this soul in the subtle body take all the impression and the projection and the imprints of the mother's mind. Actually, what is happening is children just relive. <clears throat> just now, few minutes before I was counseling somebody, this daughter is beautiful, intelligent. She is successful by her own right. She's Indian. She's living here. I couldn't believe to a family a daughter can be that violently rebellious. I started talking. 
I ask her, why are you rebellious? She says, I have a very great pain. I love my parents, I love my relatives, but they are all hypocrites and I can't stand it. Children cannot stand hypocrite parents. And main diseases, main problem in the life of a person is what he got anger out of, hypocrisy as a child. Otherwise, this body is made perfect by God and it can live it as a system. It's a sympathetic, it's a parasympathetic, it's a reaction nervous system. Triply, everything you will find is triply gay. It's a very solid car. It can go on and on with a little care here and there, but it's not possible because our lives are totally messed up. There is no preparation of preconception. Forget about the preparation in the pregnancy time is a normal, baby is growing, baby is kicking, it's all emotional. No vibration, no thought, pure enough, meditated enough, and no many hours are totally sent and experimented. Today I was watching that movie, 20 years from now, Russians are giving birth to children in water. And I saw that movie, it is called, it is called uh, having no trauma. And what they do is the parents are prepared and they are told what to do and they are very well prepared and during pregnancy they are prepared and they deliver the child in the water. And these children survive better. They have absolutely more power to have less oxygen use and their normal brain tendencies help them to remain calm because when you are born immediately, when you come out, you need more oxygen and the trauma of birth is so heavy. And actually, when I was being, I was discussing with the doctor, he was telling me that Russians are preparing to have a human race which can be in this space. I said, no, that's not true. We are preparing a race which can be better for this space. And he said, yes, I have read your work that I have come to you. I said, then I'm trying this from the last 15 years myself that I want, uh, I'm to forget about some of you who are neurotics, I have nothing to do with you. You can do whatever you want, but finally I want to have in two generations children which are competent, capable, who can stand stress absolutely, make, make no suffering with allergies, absolutely do not have any major disease such as cancer, such as this, such as that. Our main five, six killing disease can be totally eliminated, absolutely acknowledgedly. That's what my purpose is. And that's what I'm teaching ladies camp and I'm trying to reach people. If not possible, just I want to use you an excuse, leave the knowledge, and later on in generations, people will search and respect and understand that. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm just worried about what our future is tomorrow. And that's what I know, ultimately, the human race to survive has to live in weightlessness, which is a very stressful state if you are not prepared for it. And uh, Russians are preparing a lot of their race for one idea. They have in Siberia area where they have got natural hot water. And they are preparing huge water uh, facilities where these children, when grown up as human beings and children which shall be following, can go and preserve themselves for hours and hours under water and with, within water. The idea is if an atomic holocaust comes and happens, you know we have done atomic uh, experiments on islands. Islands are terrible, but the ocean around it is just neutral. So they, they found from that that they can have a very saving device as a civil defense against nuclear war. And that's why they are preparing. But the main idea in that situation is that you do have a child which is more intelligent, more normal, more happy, more creative, and more advanced in all the situations because only the attribution is that he was given 
a birth in a weightless situation. The main thing against this is that the child can be drowned and child can be done this and that, but in 20 years not a single person has been drowned. That does tell you. But uh, the doctor is very much involved to like to three at your children, because our children, you do not know, there's a difference between three at your child and other child. Three at your child will smile openly, others won't. Three at your child will get into a trauma, forget it very fast. And those mothers who have followed the instruction from 120 days to the birth can definitely feel it and understand it, the difference between their child and ordinary child from any other mother from ordinary American society. Doesn't matter whether you are rich or you are not. I was just counseling right now to the lady and I was asking, young 22-year successful girl, I said, why you want to torture your parents? She said, I enjoy it. <laughs> I said, God, how can you say I love my parents? He said, no, they are hypocrites. I'm not torturing my parents. I am torturing the hypocrisy in them. I'm getting even with them. <clears throat> Children are karma. They will teach parents what their wrongs were because they will act them out. And that is where we get heartbroken and back broken. It's very surprising. There was a mother and a daughter, and they had a long, outstanding fight. Mother had a tremendous backache, and she went to every doctor and everywhere. Finally, one day, she broke the ice and reached her daughter. And the request was, the yogi is coming, and I ask him, I, I beg of you, uh, we don't talk with each other, we don't like each other. You have never called me for all these years. But yogi is coming. Could you ask him to see me? Well, mother came. I saw, and I totally understood what was it. And I asked, can you see me tomorrow with your daughter? She said, I don't know. But I said, she can arrange for me to see you. She can come. So next day, the mother came. And the daughter came. And they talked, and I made them understand and talk and everything. Will you believe her mother's back pain gone? And gone from that day to this day? You do not understand the stress. And you do not understand how the stress can be gone. Stress can only be fought and be gone when a person have a meditative, strong mind, and it can develop. Everybody is against me here, and some people are especially on a campaign, why we are sending people to children. Our children are our pupil to school in India. It's a very hard subject. And I know you are very insane Americans, and you will never understand what I'm talking to you today. Because you play with the children like, a, like what you call it, the chessboard. Children have no future without you. This is what you think. I think children have brighter and better future without you, totally. I'm very convinced of it. First of all, if you have better and beautiful future, then I'm convinced you are some worth of it. First of all, you are neurotics. What, are you going to inject your neurosis to the children? My only fear is if you are loving and really good parents, give them a chance. And also, we don't have anything in America <coughs> where there's no peer pressure of the, or the pushers' pressure about drugs and all that. After all, who are we? We are a spiritual community. Let us sit down and decide once for all what we want in our future. Do we want all the pain we have gone through far up from our children, or we want to eliminate and cut it out? Do we want to suffer the way our parents have suffered and we have suffered? In spite of all the teachings, in spite of all the faith, in spite of all the understanding, still in triacho divorce exists. Still in triacho non-tolerance exists. Three, still in triacho emotional corruption exists. 
Why? Because we have not yet mentally developed our relationship with ourselves. We are working hard on it, I acknowledge. We are getting better, I acknowledge. We are getting really good at it, I acknowledge. But I am not willing to acknowledge that we have reached the point of perfection. We have long way to go. <coughs> what is that long way will give us? Long way will give us what we really need, a better tomorrow. Not with a better car, nor with a better house, nor with a Jewish drama, and nor with a absolutely, what you call it, uh, Catholic fear, and not with the Christian guilt consciousness, and not with protest and protest of independence, and not with a Sikh warrior image, and not with a Buddhist begging bhikshu and all that. I don't believe any of that. What I believe is we will have the most intelligent and self-contained child for tomorrow. For that, I need a woman. I don't need a traumatic, idiot, good-looking prostitute, neither I looking a very intellectual, sad, neurotic person. I need a very simple, honest, God-loving woman. Simple woman. Very simple, very beautiful, very creative. And I need a very honest, very truthful, and very together, God-loving man. It is essential. Seed and the ground. When I was explaining to the doctor that any person who does need a child tomorrow has to prepare his spermatosa, and there's not one spermatosa, one is going to get to the egg. He has to prepare millions of them, their strength, their frequency, their movement of the zigzag path, their balance with their tail. And if I, if I can tell you all that, what is written in the scripture and is the science, you will all shocked how much man in the past has advanced himself to know what the concept of conception and what is the base of a child and a human is. And it is also the circulatory movement of the egg through the tubes and its proper receptivity. You think, well, I met, it happened, it's born. It's not true. No child is born because you have conceived him. No child is born because you are the parents. There is too much psyche involved, too much preparation involved, too much righteousness involved. There is too much purity involved. There is too much light involved. It is got to be made, understood, and totally given to. It is too much of tomorrow which is at stake. At stake is not you idiots, and at stake is the entire human tomorrow. Not your belief, not your money, not your power, not who you are. That's not at stake. It's not needed, not wanted. There's no difference between you and a bunch of earthworms if we cannot give tomorrow to this earth and to the human race. That is the truth you don't want to hear. That is the truth you don't want to work for. That is the truth you can't even tolerate. Because you are emotional beasts, whirling and curling in your own temperaments. That's why our children have a bad luck and hardcore. That's why our children are in the orphan houses and in the, what they call those houses where you send them? Foster homes. Are we not ashamed as human beings? We shadow our children, they never grow. We filter their ego so powerfully, they blow on. There's hardly any balance. We think it's a property. That's what we think. A child is not a God-given gift, 
and a responsibility is a damn property. You own the title to it. I saw my mother talking one day. She said, for 18 years, I have the custody of this child. Oh, I said, Jesus Christ. 18 years, she has the title on the child. Can you believe this mother? She should have been dead. God's mercy. That would have been a better attitude. Title. I have the custody on this child. It means somebody is the prisoner of that child. Somebody is the proprietor of that child. Somebody is the custodian of the child, not God. Try to understand the pain. Try to understand the duality. God has been totally separated by psyche and the flow of God light has been cut by the very mother who gave the birth. There is, I have seen and I have seen struggle between father and mother influencing the child. Not as a union to create the child in the hand of God in the lap of infinity. Not at all. And when the God psyche clashes through these two individuals, what it burns? It burns the very fate of the child. We believe in one or two or three generations, we'll be in a position to produce, according to all human scriptures, a race of people who can understand, who can raise, and who can have children worth to be the proud of. What is the pride, pride of man? What is the pride of man? Pride of a man is when everything has gone against. <clears throat> when everything has gone against, the man has come out with all the colors. When things are down and we walk the We die before we We sing all that. Our no service is complete without the song of the Khalsa. Is that true? Do we honestly sing it and understand it and we want to live it? Forget about all scripture and religions and teachings and everything. Just one song of Khalsa which is totally American and ours, if we just live it, that is enough. Categorically enough. And we do say, princess is not royal, coward. It's not royal, it's not real. Because in every vein there's a red blood, no, no veins milk runs into. To purify the strength and the psyche of the spermatosa and that of the egg, and to preparing and giving it that time of conception, making the body as the temple of God, making the mind as the power of God, and making the soul as the light of God, those three in those two requires at the same frequency to cohibit and to coincide and to bring a child of God to the human race. It's important. Is also important. Even now, we must protect our children. Do you think that I don't miss those children who are in India? They are more friendly and loving to me than anybody of you. You know how much they talk about me? You know what I've done? I have given them a third identity. I have made our children third dimensional. I have worked very silently. I didn't make any fuss about it because I do not want to compete with you. You are parents. You have legal right. You hold the titles. You are the persecutors and the prosecutors both at the same time. Plus, you are the judges. How can I compete with you? 
I'm an old rental Indian who came to America for no purpose known. My purpose was very simple. We have two-dimensional children. Let us make them three-dimensional. How? Give them an identity, independent, stronger, which rules their parents. You know what that did to them? I tell you what that did to them. That gives them the power of appeal of justice. There is somebody who can tell our parents to shut up, and they have to shut up. So there is somebody which they want. When they cannot stand the parents, they know there is somebody, some gray beard hanging over them. <laughs> True! That image which was missing for all long is alive and well today. So without spending anything, without suffering in any way, we made our children from two dimension to three dimension. Only now one thing was required, which I wanted to create, and I'm creating it. That is to grow them independently, under the direct supervision of truth. And ask them to decide, find out the truth, and live it and prove it to me. Then the job will be complete. If such a child who's three-dimensional become fourth-dimensional, it's called four DD. Direct four experience, direct dimensional. That child and that girl, they will meet. They will bring a race which can start any drama, trauma, any neurosis, and say, "I am, I am." It's a very s long, silent battle. It's a battle between wisdom and between neurosis. It's a battle between achievement and between accomplishment and between possessions and emotions. What's a battle worth fighting? Out of which the beauty, the wonder of God will grow. Out of which the Messiah will come. Out of which God will appear in certain wombs. Because you must understand, what is a manure? It consists of a fertilizer of cow dung, human shit, what not. But once even that is matured, that becomes manure, and that gives you a good crop. I am very glad to be in America, but I have got a good manure here. <laughs> You think something, nothing keeps me here? Something keeps me here. <laughs> and I know it is only a matter of time. I, if I stick to my guns, and I stick to my guns to my truth, and I do not give an inch, and I keep going, and when things are down and dark as I walk the tallest, there are some people who will look, love to look height, because everybody loves to look to the height. As I have given to these small children a great prophecy that they have the right to justice, they may not get justice. You know why? There were two parents. They refused to send their children to Khalsa school. Well, there was a fight between them and the director. They left 3HO, they left Sikh Dharma, and they left with their children. We never heard about it. I was sad about it. It was not worth fighting. It could have been nice. You will be surprised. It's a long matter. The nine-year-old child found me to talk to me. Nine-year-old child found me to talk to me, and when I talked, he said, my spiritual name was so-and-so. Sir, you gave it to me. But my parents gave me this name. I know you will not remember me. My parents left from such and such ashram. He described the whole thing. 
I say, I recollect. What I can do for you? He say, I have come to my friend's house to call you. So what is the emergency? He said, no emergency, I have a question. I like to keep it secret. The question was very ugly situation about his mother. He wanted to know what is required to be done. I advised him properly and as truthfully I could, but I was very satisfied. Because the child remembered the third dimension and also remembered the right to approach it and did approach it and did ask it for the services, which is the fundamental right of every child. And that is what the human race is about. That's what we are about. That is what our mind is about. We have to build a mind which can totally compute itself to clean its own neurosis, own fears. All fear of mothers are imprinted in the life of child in the years of pregnancy. All insecurities of the father are imprinted in the life of the child through the time of in, uh, pregnancy. That's why, according to us, we ask the mother after 120 days to leave everything else but to meditate, cleanse herself, sing Gurbani Kirtan, do good things. <clears throat> the purpose is her cleansiness can bring godliness through her womb. And I ask you mentally, if you cannot give your child the values and the character, commitment and the strength, what you can give? I saw a movie yesterday about the mammals. It was a documentary. It was surprisingly beautiful how the animal raised their children. I was very grateful to kangaroos. They keep their kids in the pouch for a very long time for protection and for warmth. I saw many, 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 many mammals. And when I look to the American woman and her emotional creepiness with her husband, ignoring the future of her children, creating that fuss, creating that neurosis, creating those atmosphere which suffocates the child's psyche, I couldn't believe what we are doing. I know our mind has a very short range. Its processing has been damaged because of the weakness of the spermatosa. Electromagnetic field in the psyche of frequency, the frequency if it's shorter, if the movement of the spermatosa is shorter and leap is shorter, a child will born with inferior brain and quality of life. If the movement of the spermatosa is stronger and leap is larger, the child will born with extra intelligence and extra commitment and extra tolerance and absolutely a weather mood, they call it, spring weather mood. When I said to you, there's nothing in sex and there's nothing without sex, you never understood it. I hope you will read that article again. There's a lot you can understand. Actually, to be very honest and frank, I'll ask you tonight, 
take all the lectures of the past and re-listen to them. Reread them and re-understood. If they are re-understood by you, they will make a lot better sense now. Because first you were my student because of your emotions. Now you are my student because you try to understand. And third stage will come when you will be my student because you love to practice what I teach. We have not yet reached that third, third stage yet. I understand it. I hope you will understand it too. I understand that discipline given by me is not a very soft one. Because it is a real test of the psyche of the human to grow into the glory of God. As it is the test of the candle to get lit to give the light. Candle by itself may be very pretty and these days you can get candles of the design, you love to eat them. <laughs> they are apples and they are apricots and they are everything in the world. But without putting a matchstick on their head, they never give you light. And exactly without the most perfect discipline, no perfect man can be created and no perfect happiness can be experienced. There's no achievement of mine. Because I am not here for students. You all misunderstand me. If I'll have three million students, what, I'm going to win the election? I am not for it. I am here to create teachers. When I came to United States, I told you, I have not come here to collect students. I have come here to create teachers. And those created teachers will collect students. Every teacher, every master has a discipline. And it is not for me to love you. It is for me to teach you how to love to live. If you do not know how to love yourself, how you can love me? How can empty glass can give me enough water to quench my thirst? How can an emotional neurotic idiot can learn to be master of Kundalini Yoga and without that what is my future tomorrow? You do not understand. I bugged away all actor and actresses. I made everybody of you for one month to eat 15 cloves of garlic a day. Remember those days? The principle involved was that I do not want to get into a showbiz. I want to get into something which is going to live forever. A Khalsa nation has to be born. His is year of birth is 2038. Its foundation of the psyche opens up to spring and flower and 2011. And at that time, the darkness, the clouds of darkness which will hang over humanity shall be there. I've just got a report today, very fantastic. There was a very beautiful student of mine. She was a great woman. She has beautiful three sons. And she sent them with such a love them to India and then finally gave a note to her husband. Now I want to experience a different life. And I want to tell you, which you do not know, for the last year and a half I had a boyfriend. I deal with these problems and the problem is the girl is not pretty. I don't know what she thinks she is. <laughs> Month ago, a mother came to see me. I want my child back. I said, why? I have a new boyfriend. I said, then what? My boyfriend wants me to marry him. I said, marry him, then what is the problem? I don't want to marry him because he wants to have a child out of me. I said, then marry, have a child. 
He said, why not I take my old child back and satisfy him and not have a child and not have to marry, but still I love him, I need him. I said, what for? He's good in sex. I said, your child needs help. It needs medical help. It needs psychological help. We are already hustling. We are so much under pressure. She said, I know, but you have to understand my problem too. I said, what is it? I have the custody. I said, well, that can be disputed in the court. She said, that's why I came to you. It was very funny. There is a guy who was asking me to marry a particular girl. He was after her like a bloodhound, you know. And I said to him this time on the tour, I said, you really love her? He said, yes, 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 yes. just to tell me I'll marry her. I said, okay, I'll test it out. I called the girl and in her ear I told her something, which I made it up, just to test it. And we are permitted as teacher to do those kind of things. <laughs> It was within the scope, scope of the ethics. I was not crossing anything serious. But within the limits, at one time he told me something which I remembered and I said, okay, okay baby boy, I'm going to use it. So I called her and I told her, I said, your fiancé has told me this, this, this thing. Is that true or not? She went straight, asked him to go on one side and slapped across his face. He was shocked. Whole thing happened behind the curtain. So it was fascinating. He said, he said, who told you? He said, Yogi Ji. He said, I don't believe it. He said, come. She, so she brought him in there. I said, hi. You love her. I said, you love her. You want to marry her. Doesn't matter what. What did slap means to you? She said, it's a lot. Can't believe it. I said, well, start believing now. <laughs> this girl has two hands. You think she is just an ice cream. You are an idiot. You are wrong. How come? I said, this girl has a problem. I would have allowed you to marry. This woman has a tendency to love a man and to destroy a man and feel happy. Sir, you never told me. I said, you never listened to me. This is the eighth time I'm telling you. I said, you met me at such and such place, you met me at such and such ashram, at such and such tatra course, you said, did I repeat this? He said, yeah, I faintly remember it. <laughs> I said, now after a slap, do you remember it right? But I'm telling you, there's a problem with this girl. What about me? I said, there's a problem with you too. <laughs> How can I make two problems to marry? He said, well, we'll solve it. I said, by the time you will solve it, there will be a baby, and that baby will be a super problem, because between two problems come out a super problem. <laughs> but anyway, our mind is our mind. If we know it, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Me. <laughs>
the power and the strength to understand the Guru's word, understanding them deep enough so that we can enrich ourselves to live in peace, joy and happiness. Satnam. Tomorrow, <coughs> don't come with a full stomach. We have to do some kriya in which we have to relate to our mental inability. <laughs>